So, good morning, good evening. Let's start. Welcome, ladies, gentlemen, trolls, cubists, and, every, and everyone else. My name is Netko, and today we'll talk about security in secure testing from lizard to wizard. Uh, first of all, I'll start with that. Uh, uh, the entire lecture is, is one big host because you will not be a wizard after it's finished. But you have a glimpse of idea of what what uh, what security is, and huh? Fail number one. What happened with my presentation? Come on. Yeah, Ubuntu. Okay, this is me. Oh, everyone probably have this experience, and. If you think it's funny, it's bad for you. So every security presentation starts with, with a disclaimer that this is only um, for educational purposes only. We don't have to try this at production, uh, at our ex-girlfriend's block, or whatever you, you decide to do. Um, I'm really sorry, but I don't see my, um, my notes. You know, okay, we're starting slowly. You know, it's the last lecture of the, of the evening. Yesterday, there was a big chance that everything would fail with all these cocktails of Johnny Walker, you know, and after that. So, um, yeah, and mo most important, everything I say here have nothing in common with my employer. I really hope that he didn't know that I'm, I'm coming here and so on because I'll have big problems. And because you don't read that and listen, let's try it again. Why? I remember you about all the, because I don't ha know how the abbreviature of NAP and GEDEBOP is, but we don't want to try this in any government science and, and so on, and that group. So about me, the super exciting story about a fat cyclist runner and whatever the hell is this. <laughs> I was, I'm so bad at it about, about sports, as, as you can see, that I'm a meme now. It's for real. It's it's not done by me. And yeah, I really wrote a five pages of bullshits in my blog. The quality assurance. Uh, it, it's a passion of mine. For long long time ago. Um, this is a passion of making everything better and better and fatter and fatter. The DevOps nowadays. Um, uh, I always had uh, uh, had this interest about uh, how the system works, how how to do, uh, how they are working, and uh, what's what's below. So last couple of months, half a year, I'm uh, scratching the surface of the DevOps, and for now I'm terribly bad at it, but it can be getting any worse. Who knows? About the performance testing, there's a short story that I'm not sure that I would like to tell you, but probably I will in uh, this panic attack that I'm feeling right now. But <laughs> my, you know, everything, wh what we're starting here for every one of you uh, is, um, uh, <clears throat> is with starting with, uh, with the sentence, what if? What if I put this here? Or what if uh, there's uh, five more persons that are trying to enter my block? But what, what, what if? So I said, what if I, uh, I try to find out how is the output of one of our clients site in a couple of years ago, and it was a big drama. But anyway, I do the, the, the performance testing presentation in QChange accepted last year, and, uh, but it was not as memorable as uh, the presentation that I do in front of my colleagues. So I was in there, there was 50 persons in there that are like, oh, motherfucker, come on, just finish with that, and I want to buy a coffee or something like that. And I was like, uh, everything was going well. And uh, in one brief moment, there was a graph that I have to show what happens if uh, our site is uh, um, the resources and everything so on. And uh, just a short glimpse of panic, I didn't uh, hit, didn't do, um, didn't execute the 10,000 or 5,000 uh, requests, but I did 15, 16. Thousand requests, and as you can imagine, in my own personal blog, because you know, the nginx, the web server, shit he spends, then the MySQL died, then the VPS died, and I died too <laughs> internally, like so thinking there, oh, it, it will be fine. It, it wasn't fine, but anyway, the secure tag is my uh, out of work 
interest. And why is that? Because it's really, re really interesting that uh, you know that uh, uh, almost every week you you heard that there was a security breach here, security breach there. There was a couple of millions of dollars in here, and I said, well, can it be? Uh, this is my um, my passion for the last couple of couple of months. And I'm a blogger. It's my own blog, which is called netco.info. And it's it's not. It's not. <laughs> the podcasting, I bought a microphone, everything, so on, and I'm like, woo, I will podcast two months, nothing, but I will. Um, and yeah, and something something that uh, that is serious, that all, all of us here are knowledge sharing um, driven lecturers. This means that. <laughs> all of us, or I'm not sure, more more than me. We don't receive money about the, that. We're not getting paid, but <laughs> <laughs> we're not getting. I am not getting paid, uh, <laughs> but we, but but we do this here to help someone to 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 have uh, just a little patience and say, oh, okay, let's try. Uh, I'll go home after a couple of beers, and I'll write in Google how to be a security expert, and it it, it will be the biggest price for me. I would like to say that <laughs> you, know, you know the internal paid heralds. This is me right now. So it's, I would like to say that security is, is easy, but it's not. Uh, uh, w when I start uh, exploring this field, and I was like, oh, I'll download two or three mega hacking tools, and I'll say, hack this. No, <laughs> it's not working like that. And I was uh, very surprised. And why, why security testing is, is so hard? For me, <laughs> probably because I'm below average, but still, <laughs> uh, you have to know about programming or scripting. You have to know the, the all the communication protocols. How is uh, the information coming from here to there to understand, for example, may, may the middle attack? Why, why is happening? You have to understand operation systems. Uh, you have to know all the small libraries that are updating every day on Linux and what happens in there. There was a story about um, OpenSSL before a couple of years ago that it was a security hole in 10 years, and you have to know about that. Anyway, not we should not forget that security is not is not a uh, it's not a destination; it's a journey, and very not not cool journey for that that guy here. But no matter how much security firewalls, updates, and everything you put in there, there is always a, a security. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> it's YouTube. Uh, <laughs> there will always be always be the human factor that that can can uh, can fuck fuck us up. For example, you, know, you manage uh, a company with uh, 500 persons. You made everything super super secure. But, but after a couple of beers, you just ask her college, what's your password? And she said, oh, my pet name, what's your pet name? It's evil, oh, okay. And now I have internal access to the system, and it's not cool. The structure of my presentation is none. Uh, we don't have a structure, we'll try it as it is. One of, uh, one troll of there said that I, uh, that, <laughs> that, that the live coding is, is not a good option. I said, what can go wrong? The last time it go, went wrong last time before that too. Now we'll see. Uh, so, the demo time. How much of you were hurt to work with Docker or Docker Compose? Oh, come on. 15%, 20%, something like that. Okay. So, um, Docker, for, for the others that, that are too shy to, to raise their hands, is uh, uh, OS level virtualization system that contains uh, software packages in some places called containers. These containers can be absolutely um, separate from each other, or they can communicate. That's uh, that's your uh, your configuration, your your choice. Uh, uh, yeah, this is Docker here. You see the operation system and and Docker. Yeah. And the Docker Compose will now now I'll show, and uh, because Docker is, is the main the main platform, the Docker Compose is a tool that you can define with uh, with YAML uh, a lot of um, Docker images. Because, uh, for example, we have some uh, serious infrastructure that w that we have to to create, and uh, it it will be crazy to run uh, create this container. Okay, it's done. Create this container now. 40 containers. It's 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 not a good idea. It's not always a good idea. 
it's never a good idea. So here, uh, help uh, uh, Docker Compose is helping us. And with one, I will show you how how it looks. Uh, do you see the? Yeah, okay. Uh, and the back rows, do you see the screen or the fonts are okay for you? If, uh, oh, okay. One guy say it's okay. So this is Vim, and I know how to exit from uh, from there. <laughs> but it took me it took me some <laughs> it took me some time. So what <laughs> what what we were doing? This is the the YAML that uh, that that creates the infrastructure that uh, that we will be working on uh, the, uh, in this presentation, and uh, it's just. Uh, with with this uh, 20 through 30 lines of code, we will install MariaDB, we will install uh, Apache, and we will install WordPress in this Apache using MariaDB. And this is, sorry? I bet a minute and a half, but we'll see. And uh, for the for my demo purposes, I had to install some a bit. Uh, uh, Early version of WordPress to to show you that uh, the tools that that we were using, and so on. So I installed one, but I think that, <laughs> that 2015 WordPress will not be a good idea. But anyway, uh, this is WordPress 4.3.1.1. Uh, we're defining the ports here. This is um, 80. Uh, the, uh, from the left side is the is the uh, the ports that will be visible to our machine, and the the from the right right side your right side here, yeah, will be uh, the internal container ports. But anyway, so we're opening here uh, the web server and uh, with HTTP and HTTPS. <laughs> uh, I'm not saying anything because they'll, they'll beat me. So uh, there, uh, I think, uh, do you want to, to do it live? Yeah, we'll do it live. What what can go wrong, you know? So uh, the goal from the presentation and, and the demonstration here will be to to make all this here live, and you can uh, put your uh, your watch to to see how much time it will it will take. So we're saying Docker compose. Let's see, is it something working here? No. Why no? Because uh, the pointer here is terrible. Is the state is is exit, and uh, the only command that we we'll use is uh, is up because uh, we are in the directory in the context uh, where, where the YAML file is, uh, and uh, enter. So it will take minutes, minute, minute and a half. Uh, this is, uh, uh, in, in meantime, I will show you how uh, I found this uh, infrastructure and uh, how you can test it at home. And for reference, if you don't know, Docker is available in, is available in Linux, Windows, and, uh, and uh, Mac, so you can test it at home. It's, uh, the installation in Windows is next thing is finished, so it's not a big, big deal. How can I use my browser? Ah, come on, guys. No. No. It's my biggest fear to fail as great as, as now. So you, you don't see. Okay, Ubuntu. Ubuntu is my enemy. Uh, what 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 had I done? Uh, Docker have Docker Hub. It's similar to the other hub that some of us know. Uh, Docker Hub is is a place where where all the images is in there. There's a pre-built image. You can build your own image. You can customize it and do whatever you want. You can save it and so on. So there's official images. There are same official images. Uh, and Bitnami. This is a corporation that maybe you know about uh, with the their X. A MPP uh, package, but anyway, the command that I use to download this package is just this one: Docker pull. Do you see it? Oh. See or not? <laughs> uh, this is the uh, this is the uh, the command, and when I do that, it connects to the server. You you have to be uh, registered, but the registration is ten seconds literally. Uh, it pulls up the the image, and after that we just run it. Let's see what happened with the <sighs> exit with error code no zero. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Fine, I'll see you. So if everything is working fine, I have to have in the local host uh, at port 80 and port 443. 
uh, up and turning WordPress. Why we don't have it? Because as you see here, uh, there's a, or no, uh, yeah, there's a, a for, for now, because MariaDB is taking really a lot of time, I don't know why, uh, to load up. We, we uh, are upping up the container, running MariaDB in there, and now the other uh, part of the services are running. You can make some prioritization and say, okay, uh, first I have to, to have database, and after that I have uh, to have my uh, Apache or Nginx, and after that I have to have my WordPress. Maybe it will work, maybe it will not. It will take some time. So we're continuing with the presentation and pretending that nothing happens. Do you see, uh, come on, what happened? Okay, so it's, it's still running. Do you, how much time it took for now? Two minutes and a half. Fuck, okay, <laughs> two minutes and a half. Uh, eh, we'll see, what can go wrong? So, uh, waiting to, for to be 10, 15 years, uh, minutes, years, yeah. Uh, I, I'll continue with the, it's not funny, Victor, it's not funny. Uh, we'll continue with the, uh, with that, the, the Q&A session. It's, uh, for, for the other side, wh when I'm a listener, it's very painful when, when, when the Q&A time comes and, and they say, come on, and you're like, yeah, ask me something. And you're in there and say, I, ask, I would like to ask you something, but I'm too shy to say, I have a question. Is it stupid? Is it not? Is the lecturer stupid enough not to answer me? So we would make it a little bit less painful and uh, everyone can uh, ask their questions in slide dot do slash netsec with netco security, but yeah, netsec. So if you have any questions, you can ask me there. And at the end of the presentation, I will read them. It can be anonymous, so every everything from the keep yourself positive messages, if you know, <laughs> you know what I mean, and Rotten Tomatoes and, and your questions can be asked here. If uh, there are sort of reasonable questions, Victor, please don't do that. If, you, if there, are, uh, there are a lot of reasonable questions, I'll write a blog post about it and, and try to answer to every, every one of them. So let's see what happened with the, with the WordPress and my terrible idea to do this. Oh, no. Fuck. Okay. I can live with that. Fuck off. Um, Victor was right. But we'll continue. I'll do this on my uh, personal blog because I, I knew that it's something cool shit up here. At the last minute of the last presentation, of the last day of the, of the last is the, yeah. So we'll talk about the invulnerable web application. So does any one of you l heard it before, the DVVA, the invulnerable web application? One, two, oh, this is so sad, four, five persons, six, cool, 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 seven, okay. Cooler, cooler, cooler. So why there is an application like that out there? I, I searched about uh, maybe, but I'll discuss it after that. Um, the vulnerable web application is a collection of um, of vulnerable scripts, and you'll say, "Why the fuck you have to have some vulnerable scripts?" And I'll tell you because you have to. Uh, you're reading about the security, and there's some uh, some interesting stuff like um, um, it's brute force attacks, for example. But you don't have to make a brute force to your block or to some site or, or your employer site. Oh, come on. So uh, th this is some uh, training sandbox thing that we will we'll run on, on Docker if the Docker is with me again, because as we saw, this will, this will not live, die. Uh, yeah, so how we are running the, the invulnerable web application, this one will not fail or I hope it will not fail. Uh, we're just saying the port here, it will, it's uh, 666. And the uh, the image, the image name. After some years, it will here. You can see uh, there's uh, Apache uh, starting, and uh, there's uh, some Apache stuff like MariaDB2. Um, hmm. No, <laughs> motherfucker. What? Uh, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, 
15, yeah, yeah. It is, it is. So the installation, what, what, what was the installation? As I said, you pull the image, run the command, the command looks like, uh, oh, come on, looks like this. And after a while, I have to, to have some installation of the involvement. Oh, this is working. Oh, my God. So uh, the, the, it, it's a super wooden, it's very broken design stuff, but it's, it's very old, so, so it's okay. Uh, now, I will install it. It's, it's super, super fast. Admin and uh, the password is password. <laughs> <laughs> Create database, and that's all. We will have installed the vulnerable web application. So in uh, all the tutorials that there is in, in the in internet, they said never run the vulnerable web application in on the wild. That that everyone can can reach it. Why? Because you'll see in a couple of seconds. I'll give a chance about Docker Compose one more try. But I doubt that it will live. Admin, password. And here is the brilliant interface of uh, the invulnerable web application. I was really passionate to show you all of this, but it will, it will not be uh, even remotely funny. It will be like I'll, I'll trying to, to go with for, for every attack. So I concentrate only for the SQL injection and brute force because it's, they are the funniest stuff, but uh, and I can, I can show you with, with some tools. So you have uh, here the injections. Uh, the most brilliant stuff, uh, the the, brilliant, the most brilliant thing about the vulnerable web application is that w w when you learn how the system works, you can change it and say, okay, uh, uh, now I can brute force some super shitty script, but now let's make it harder or harder or impossible. It will make it lower <laughs> because as I said, I'm below average. And um, we will start, let's see what's happening here. Aha, uh -huh. SQL injection. How much of you are hurt ever before about the SQL injections in one way or another? Uh -huh. Yes, <laughs> the right questions. How much of all of you have drink beer yesterday? Okay, just, I was interested. Um, so what, what mean SQL injection? Uh, SQL injection is uh, some, uh, um, the, hacker that tried to run SQL injection means to run a malicious SQL statement. They're really not very user friendly and it's very um, very hard to understand it for me too. But um, mostly uh, some of you have seen this symbol here, uh, this, uh, this string here. Uh, this, yeah. So, but there's, okay, as I said, uh, the, it's, it's SQL injection. But there is one Orhan Murad joke. It's a blind SQL injection. And uh, wh what's the difference? Because it <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a... <laughs> Guys, come on. Uh, there, there is a difference, but it's not, 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 not a big difference. So SQL injection, w w when you put uh, an apostrophe for this string that I showed you before, uh, the system say there is an SQL error here, and you see that there is an SQL error here, uh, there. Uh, but the blind SQL means that uh, that there is some SQL error somewhere, but it will also be shown on the screen. So there's a bit of progress of the <laughs> development. And now we will try to, are there Rick and Marty fans here? Okay, you know about the fourth season, right? Okay, so uh, we will make the demo with the uh, with tool call, called SQL map. Uh, you, can, you can speak. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you'll see the WordPress up and running. How much time it took? Five minutes. Okay. Why why, why this fail? I'll show. Uh, I'll tell you well, when you're uh, stopping the um, Docker Compose with Control C. Sometimes it's uh, uh, it didn't it don't release the networking module, and there are supports AT and 443 are still up and running, and that's, that's, that's why uh, Docker Compose shits his pants. Anyway, now uh, we'll do 
uh, SQL injection. And for the most basic and the most, uh, the first part of security is when you see some field like this and you put an apostrophe. And it looks like this. This means that, that our system is, uh, is vulnerable and there might be some, some issues. But now we, we can do anything because it's just a message, how we can log into the database, how we can explore it, how we can break it. Well, there's the tools for that. There, there's a very big community around, around the SQL injection because it's the most easiest and it's easy to show uh, how, how it works. So, um, we're starting with a with Python script we will run here. It's called SQL map. What I'm doing here, I, I, I decided to just copy and paste. It's super lame, I'm super lame and super fat and stupid, but it's better because if I start to, to typing something, and it's <laughs> you better, better not see that's another part of me. What, I'm, what am I doing? I'm invoking uh, Python. I'm uh, the Python script here. The URL, not the user, is a local host at port 666 because this is the number of the beast. Anyway, uh, and uh, here we, uh, we define and say, oh, okay, here I enter something and it's just blurry. What will happen if I click enter? <laughs> No, I am prepared. So, um, yes, 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 and yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry, but but the display is so fucking okay. So, um. biggest fear that I have. Why why this failed? Can any, anyone ten, can tell me why why this failed? This is the parameter, uh, this is the command here that I am running. No one? Because I didn't specify my session ID. Because we're, uh, we're behind uh, authentication form, uh, we have to provide some cookie or some uh, some credentials. And the most easy way to find the cookie is to open the network tab in any browser, find your cursor somewhere here or there, uh -huh, okay. And search for cookies and the cookie that we're using right here, there's two cookies, it's a security uh, law and this is the, uh, the session ID. And if all demo gods are with me, it's something will happen or it will not. So the output, really, there these all tools uh, blowing so much information. It's so frustrating for the first sight, but I'm sure. It said, aha, uh -huh. I run, this is the script, that this is the payload uh, that, that was run. So um, very long and very complex stuff that I really don't understand. I never wanted to do, <laughs> to understand. But uh, what happened, it, it said, okay, you have two, da two database here. It's a then vulnerable application database and the information schema from the from the MariaDB. And if you continue to exploit this, uh, now now we know that there's two databases. And I say, okay, let's let's see if we can see the tables that are in, in the database called them vulnerable web application. And with another payload, that is too complex for me to, to understand, uh, we can see that there's a two, two tables with, uh, with their names, guestbook and users. And because users are the, the most interesting thing that we uh, were aiming for, I'll say, okay, um, show me all the data that the users can provide. As you see, I didn't enter anywhere any um, any credentials. That it's let's see, let's pretend that it's some server somewhere in in India. And what happened is that uh, uh, I gain access to the tables in there, the content of the tables in there. And there are some uh, users, 
fabulous musicists, some other, and with their uh, MD MD5 uh, hash, right? But what will happen if we try to decrypt all those? It may be I killed something, but I'm not sure what. Anyway. One of my biggest fears, but still, let's pretend that nothing happens. And we'll go to the uh, SQL. Map, output, localhost, yeah, dump, and what is in here, users.csv. And we'll see the totally unauthorized database that we reach because of this apostrophe here. The usernames that are in there, they are MD5 hashes and the passwords. Why I, uh, why I say able to, to, to find out the passwords? Because they are super easy. If I had some complex password, you know that MD5 is not the best thing that you can uh, use for, it's not the fastest thing to do. So, okay, we have uh, we have a really, really stupid uh, vulnerability here. But what will happen? Ah, I would like. Uh, I have to demonstrate you in the the blind SQL injection. So the same field, but if I put my apostrophe in there, there's something say something says that something happened, but but we don't know what's what's happening. And so we we cannot be sure that <laughs> we can watch. We cannot be sure that there's uh, there's some issue. So we will put the the security measurements to medium. And now after after that, aha. Uh -huh. And now what we're doing? We have a drop down. We cannot write in nothing in there. How can you try to test in your uh, project or whatever the, the through here the dem vulnerable web application to find out what is happening. So it's super easy and we can use only our browser without any plugins. And this is just using the inspector. We can submit the form, and uh, here I'm a new uh, f new Firefox user. I and uh, these days I, I found out that there's a uh, edit and recent functionality here, which is very interesting. And uh, from here, I can update the payload and say, okay, I would like an apostrophe here. Submit. Oh, it's so hard. Send, nothing happens, or does it? When we go to the response, we see that there is an SQL injection vulnerability. This may seem a super stupid functionality, but it's very helpful, and if you're trying to inspect some uh, post or get requests, it's, it's super cool. So, without any other fails, hopefully, we'll do another, uh, Another trick, it's called brute force. I believe that all of you, or a big part of you, heard about the br brute force before. Yeah, probably. Uh, what happens, uh, wh what does brute force mean? Is that uh, this means that you have user, or you don't have a user, and ju just a big list of, uh, of uh, the most used passwords, for example. There's a ton of these uh, this dictionaries. And uh, what we will do, will run uh, an attack in, in this form. Uh, the username is admin and the password is password. So here it lo looks like that we're open. If we enter something that are not the uh, correct credentials, we'll s it, will, it will say that, fuck off, you, you don't have access here. So what will happen if we run another script, it's called Hydra. Uh, all, all of this um, security stuff, all, all the names of the uh, of the tools are so strange that sometimes I'm like, what the fuck? Anyway, uh, wh wh what's happening? I'm running the the script. It's uh, the the tool. It's called Hydra. The username is admin, but I can make it uh, from the I can load it from a big CSV, no matter. And the passwords. The p parameter for passwords or some dictionary file. My dictionary file is for five, six entries or something like that because we, we don't have to wait 11 minutes and a half. 
uh, decrypting, and uh, where we should hit is the local hosts, the port 666, and this is the, uh, the get form, and so on and so on. This is our cookie that I will not skip this time, and uh, we'll output to some file to see what. <gasps> I have four minutes. What? Okay. Uh, what happened? It, it, it happened very fast and it's super not readable. So we'll try to open it with Hydra. And here, down here, because there, there's some old output that I forgot to, to wipe, there's a, uh, the host name, there's a login, and the password. It's so easy that if your uh, server don't have a max try, for example, if, if I try for some time uh, on the uh, some count of requests for uh, logging in. Uh, it's so easy to hack something that, uh, for example, all this, uh, I I'll enter my uh, super stupid password, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, because this site is not so interesting for me. And that's why, th that's how uh, the hackers and the, uh, all, all the other uh, guys with, with those black heads are uh, getting our passwords. And so, I'll continue because I don't have any time. Uh, yeah, I already showed you that uh, the, the drop down with the blind SQL injection and uh, the brute force. So I forgot to, to show my, my presentation. So I'm finishing soon. Uh, the biggest and the most interesting tool about testing is called WordPress scan. It works only on WordPress, unfortunately. But it's uh, uh, so sophisticated and so easy to use that if you have some version of WordPress of somewhere on the wild and it's not updated uh, from some minor version to another or uh, your WordPress core or plugins or themes, you're in a big trouble. Because if some fat guy like me just decide to say, okay, I'll put, uh, am I writing here? Okay, this is, this is the, the output. WordPress can, the URL, which is my local host that is working now. And I will just enumerate all the users. This DAP token, uh, I can hide that, but I decided to show you because <laughs> why not? Uh, and so this will go through the entire site and to try with uh, some, with, with dif different te techniques to find out what, uh, uh, what plugins do you have, what teams and uh, what version of WordPress. So, Where's the problem? You say uh, it's it's not it's not a big deal. Cheers, but bless you. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> but but it's it's a big deal because here we are seeing, for example, um, what 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 what? Let's see. It, th there's a lot of uh, a lot of issues here because I'm using the, the old old version of WordPress. But let's say an authenticated view or of private or draft posts, and you say mm, okay. So what? The problem is that there's uh, something called C CVE, which is the every one of these vulnerabilities have 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 one. And when you have the CVE, which is, uh, for example, the year and uh, and its ID, you can search on the internet. I don't. I, I decided not to do this here, but just show you how how this works. It's so easy to find a proof of concept which is a simple script that exploit this, vulnerab this particular vulnerability. So just every child can try to, can do it. And it can do it because I did it a couple of times on my blog. I said, eh, it's not something with high importance. And then today is restoring the database of the blog because, yeah. Uh, but the other thing that is very cool and not cool is that uh, the users are listed too. So what uh, the, the brute force, the problem there is uh, that, that your password can be super secure, but username can be super secure too. If you enter, um, I'll not give an example, but some interesting username, for example, big and, uh, uh, and with a uh, lot of uh, digits and, uh, and so on, it will be hard. But what if I, I know on every site, every WordPress site, it's open that you can scan all the users. And here, the user is called user. And it's because you probably not believe him because if I was on your place and was watching myself, I would not believe myself too. That's, that's why I will 
user. I'll demonstrate you just by adding one user to see that this is working or, just, or the entire presentation is a big hoax. Give me some username, please. Pesha, we have a fan club. Pesha. I choose Petco, but who am I? Whatever. So we have two users, as you see, user and special with email Petco. That's <laughs> some some serious uh, serious in issues in there. You know, the bipolarity is not not always the best the best thing. And here we can see that there's user called Pesho. And from now on, I know that the username is Pesho, for example. And I can run the some dictionary. It's called dictionary attack because you you don't generate every. Uh, every try for the password by, by yourself, but you use, for example, the 500 most used passwords in the world, and you'll be devastated when you see how much of them are you using from your daily basis, So it's just me, who knows. Now, after we finish the, the WordPress scan and the dictionary attack, and the demo that the gods were, was not very smiling at me, there's a last words, and this don't, doesn't seem to be Ah, come on, dude. Anyway, uh, so you see that it's it's very simple with just five words uh, and uh, two tools uh, and uh, one um, one installed Python that you can run something somewhere and scan uh, any site that you want to. We don't want to scan in ev every site because you know. But still, you can try it for my blog, for example. And now you, there, you see that there's a user called Netco, and if you know me well, probably you can guess my password, who knows? Or you can use the, the forgotten password feature that, that was recently there was an issue like that. If you try to adopt the security, if not security first on the development, because I know that a lot of you works in uh, on old projects that are very specifically big pile of shit that you can try to use the, the security uh, best practices or not. My time is over, sorry. It's good just to try to test it. I once tried on my previous um, employer, and we were a company that provides a lot of uh, PHP scripts, real lot, 80 and more. Um, and when I started, I said, I'll try just to, to see. I'm sure that it's, it will be fine, two months, <laughs> We're releasing <laughs> emergency emergency patches of all of these that are working 10 years, and there's so big, uh, so, so much uh, uh, security issues in there that you're like, what the fuck? Just try it. It's super interesting. And the Q&A Q time, I bet that no one wrote me, but do I try? Ah, do you know <laughs> uh, this this view here? Uh, once I was on the hack conf, maybe five six years ago. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, let's hide this one for now. Uh, and, oh, uh, fuck. Uh, you will see my history, whatever. Um, and, and, and some guy said, uh, okay, th it was um, uh, a lighting tone. He said, now, uh, he opens this view and say, now I'll demonstrate you. And the, and the crowd was like, ho, ho, ho. And I'm, I'm like, what, what happened, what happened, what happened? And it was Pornhub on the most used top sites here <laughs> in the second place. Like, who, who didn't use uh, incognito mode? <laughs> yeah, it's not funny. <laughs> now, let's try to, to find out what's Arduino Futra. I love the penetration. What draws the security thing? <laughs> who is Bobby? Mm. Okay. It's the normal thing to fall, fail so frequently. Uh huh. <laughs> If you're a woman, <laughs> so uh, why 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 the system fails? Because I'm the last lecturer and you're still here and no one kills me. I, I will continue. If some there's an issue, so you can just stop my microphone. I can be really loud. Why there's so much security breaches? Uh, it's a very good question, very reasonable. And uh, the answer is that uh, the security, as the performance testing, sometimes is the QA too are uh, very neglected. And you say, okay, we will use the, the latest uh, frameworks, the ORMs, the best, um, the best practices or so on, but it's not happening. You know that we have uh, a really big project with a lot of modules and you're 
your, if you're using NPM and you say that you're using 1,500 um, models uploaded somewhere, it's, there's a vulnerability everywhere. And they're so big sometimes that uh, I, uh, on open projects, you have, no, don't go. <laughs> on, the, on, the, <laughs> on the open projects, you can see their GitHub page and the fix, and sometimes the fix is uh, two symbols, five symbols, 10 symbols, something like that. The, uh, the open SSL issue that was before a couple of years ago, the uh, hard bleed, if you remember, uh, the fix was 10 rows, for example, something like 10 lines. Uh, how much you can start in for sec and good resources for beginner. So I thought about that, and thanks for the question. Uh, there are, and I'll share with you on my blog, because uh, here, if I shared you some links, it will be very, uh, okay, do you try some ever to, to make a picture for uh, some, this long link and, and then try to, to write it by hand, it's, it's crazy. So I'll, after a week or two on netco.info, I'll put all the materials that are really helpful for me. Uh, are we still lizards? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're lizards. I adore you, okay. Are you a woman? <laughs> bad, bad. Anyway, I'll answer all the questions or some of the questions in my blog. Uh, I'm available now in the entire evening here, and if someone have, have any questions that are reasonable or not, I'm here. Thank you for the attention, and yeah. <laughs>